Hello and welcome back to Cracking On With The Sun and your eyes don't deceive you, I have another glamorous blonde with me here today. Um, Amanda, as we told you yesterday, is spending the day with the England rugby team, no less, um, but Hayley's here instead. So Hayley's joining us from the Sun's Features team and she's going to be offering us a whole new um, perspective on the islanders, I think. Yeah. You, you're always sort of digging into sort of the bigger picture, I guess that's a good yeah. way of looking at it. Do a lot of the body language stuff as well. Oh. And speak to experts. Oh, um, we love that. Yeah. So we're going to hear all about that later. Um, but most importantly, I think a really important question to ask you, Haley, is are you locked in? I have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> I've got a boyfriend, but not sure if I'm locked in because what the hell does that mean? Oh my God, I know. So we were talking about this yesterday on the podcast and Amanda's question to me was that I was married, but was I locked in? So I went home and I asked my husband, um, who doesn't watch Love Island, doesn't care about any of this stuff, are we locked in? And he was like, I don't know. <laughs> so this is my big question, like, what does it even mean? I think I'm going to go out on a limb and say it means <laughs> exclusive. But then I'm also like, what is the difference? Yeah. Really? Is it more exclusive than exclusive? I I thought, I mean, even George is confused. So, <laughs> I mean, we definitely are. Because you're a young person, so you know about these things. <laughs> Not that young. Um, because <laughs> uh, what I thought was really funny is that on last night's episode, I think Georgia was confused by it because yeah. she said to the girls that we're exclusive she says we're exclusive she didn't use this locked in terminology no. she i think she's got no idea but imagine if on the outside toby does something and she's like but we're exclusive and he was like no we're just locked in oh my god <laughs> no that'd be awful can but you imagine no, it'd be so bad <laughs> Because this is like a whole new like language of, uh, y you know, people think, well, for example, we were sleeping together, which means that I thought you weren't sleeping with anyone else. And now this is a whole new, like... Well, I think that's not allowed when you're locked in. <laughs> okay, this is I'm new. <laughs> yeah, I don't think you're allowed to sleep with other people when you're locked in. I think we need to find like a genuine <laughs> young person to explain this to us. If you're a young person and you want to explain this to us, then please get in touch. Please, please. <laughs> Um, so, um, obviously, last night's episode, we had the the girl, girls' calls from home. Yeah, it was cute. I really liked it. It was so much better than the Meet the Families. Yeah, it was. Yeah, because I always feel like the Meet the Families, unless it's a particularly iconic family. Yeah, I don't care. It's like, this was like, we know these people... They've, we've seen them on TV before. Mm. Like, I want to know what they're like with their friends yeah, as well. exactly. Because I don't know about you, but if I was having a conversation with my mum, it would be a different conversation to the one that I'd have with like, my best mates. Yeah. yeah, and I think we got we got that vibe a bit. Yeah. Um, the ones that made me laugh the most was how <laughs> like Olivia calls in from the Loose Women oh my God, studio. I know. She has to make a point, like, guys, I'm on TV. Like, I'm on Loose Women, you know, I'm a panellist now. Have you met Olivia before? Yeah, I love her. She's yeah. exactly the same in real life, isn't she? That's what I always think. Oh, yeah. And the other thing that I always say about Olivia is, like, she's such a, like, a pro. Yeah, yeah. She, I feel like she knows what she's doing. Like, she knows how to say something controversial, but not too controversial as well. Yeah. I also love how she, like, dragged her husband Bradley yeah. on yeah. Um, to, to chat as well. Um, but I can tell you later, so stay tuned for this. Um, the calls from home kicks off later. So on tonight's episode, yeah, I, people yeah, have things to say. And yeah, I'm I know. Um, but the really big... Um, thing that I really struck me is why does Danny Dyer need a bed that big yeah it's true I mean it is good having a big bed though like because especially sharing with someone like <laughs> just it gets too hot because <laughs> uh, I was like nothing says that the thing that struck me about both Danny Dyer and Olivia Atwood so when we first met them obviously in Love Island series three and Four. Oh, yeah. Um they you know, obviously Danny Dyer had Danny Dyer Senior, so she was coming into it quite polished. But Olivia was 
no feral <laughs> yeah. and that's why we loved her yeah but both of them like the glow up yeah it's real yeah and like it's very obvious from just the fact that danny's tuning in from a giant mansion ridiculous <laughs> and olivia's tuning in from a studio <laughs> and i love that i think that's the really important thing um and the reason why we wanted you to come on the podcast today is that love island like genuinely does change lives it doesn't does, it definitely so you've chatted to um, a kind of branding expert, haven't yeah, you? Yeah, Nick Eid. So Nick Eid, he works with all kinds of people, doesn't he? Yeah. So what's Nick's job in real life? Tell me about Nick. So he's a brand and culture expert. Okay. But um, he's worked with loads of celebrities, managed them over the years, and sort of knows, he knows how, like, love art, like influencers become who they are almost. Okay. And get the, what's going to make brands want to work with them okay so he he is sort of the i guess the expert guru behind the people who come out and just end up doing teeth whitening ads yeah versus the ones that like become an actual brand yeah. so like he knows olivia atwood. like olivia atwood amazing so you chatted to him about like what's gonna happen for the cast on this series like there are obviously some everyone went in known but there are some that weren't as loved as they are now who are going to have bigger even bigger careers and there are some who were doing quite well and sort of might not be after <gasps> i'm really excited about this because we've talked quite a bit on the podcast about how some people went in there with quite a lot to lose so yeah. for example chris taylor yes um I can't wait to hear what Nick has to say about that because he went in, he makes loads of money from his funny TikToks yeah, and I mean, Barbie he was in and the everything. Barbie film. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> and I have a feeling this won't have panned out too well mm, for him. You might be right. <laughs> yeah. And then there's other people who, you know, Georgia Steele, I think, personally, I think she wanted to go in there and prove that she's now this sophisticated young lady, as she always says. And yeah, again. She- Hasn't quite done that. <laughs> yeah. Oh, amazing. I'm looking forward to this. Let's hear from Nick. Hi, I'm Nick Eade and I'm a brand and culture expert. Now, the Love Island All-Star stars are already known, but to compete against each other and come out top has been really interesting for me to see. There have been some who've managed to improve their reputations and will make a killing from their appearances, and others who have either come and gone too quickly to leave a mark or ones who've gone too far and their reputations are left in tatters and so their lucrative deals are too. With many reality stars out there, it's important for brands to think about the ones who are going to sell their products and also be really good brand ambassadors. Now, for the losers of the show, in my mind, they have to be Arabella Chi. You know, she's gone from being um, somebody who hangs out with uh, A-listers like Leonardo DiCaprio to being rejected by Chris and nearly every single person on the island. The next one has to be Georgia. I mean, she reminded everybody how iconic she was with her I'm loyal babe catchphrase, but I don't think her fan base are going to be that loyal to her anymore. Now, Joe Garrett was one of the most hyped contestants and her return to the island was really great but it was over too quickly and Messy Mitch I think he wanted fame more than he wanted love. Toby well poor Toby that's all I can say. Winners in my mind are Callum very genuine straight up guy he's definitely a show favourite he's come out of his shell and you know he's a really funny man and I think he will do very very well from this. Now Molly to me is a standout star she's been on an emotional roller coaster but she's definitely going to win the hearts of her fans and Tom's too. Now, Anton, he's definitely one to watch. I think he could be the next Joe Witt. He's clever, articulate and interesting. Hannah Elizabeth, now she succeeded in reuniting her reality TV career with her really bubbly Scouse personality. She's very funny and the TV loves her. Now, Josh, I love him. Uh, and finally, Kaz, she's the voice of reason, the mummer of the villa. Kaz has showed us how it's done. To me, she is a superstar and sending love to everyone on Love Island. I am fuming that Nick said that about Arabella because I love her. Do you? Yeah. Oh, so I sort of do agree with him. Oh my God. Right. Tell me more about the Arabella situation. So obviously, yeah, before Love Island, well, before this series, she we had seen her like partying on Leonardo DiCaprio's yacht. She was obviously in a relationship with Ruben Diaz, like a footballer. I feel like she was hanging out with the a-listers now she has been rejected by pretty much every guy in there um and also i sorry to say but i feel like 
Adam doesn't like her as much as she likes him. Oh. She was the only option. So does Nick think, Nick thinks that this will really damage her brand, does he? Yeah, I think... He basically said he does think she's still going to get work. I mean, look at her. She's absolutely stunning. Mm. Um, but he thinks maybe fast fashion rather than before she would have got high end. Oh, I know. Bella. I know. That makes me really sad because I love her. <laughs> I think uh, m- my favorite thing about her is that like she gets she keeps getting rejected, but she just keeps going. Yeah, that is true. She seems lovely as well. <laughs> I don't really get why she keeps getting rejected because... Literally, she is so stunning as well. Yeah. And a lovely person. Yeah. But she does Good. seem to be getting rejected. <laughs> Good caveat there. Um, and obviously, Nick sounds there like he thinks Callum and Molly are also going to come out of this really well, whether together or not together. Yeah. I think so tell me more about this. So he does think, he said he'd put money on um, Molly and Tom winning the show. But he thinks separately anyway or maybe together because everyone wants them together Mm. molly and callum have come out of this really well um he thinks callum well beforehand obviously they were sort of no seen as villains of the show because they were known for um coming back from casa amor and shauna saying um Congrats, hun. Congrats, hun. I was like, you okay, hun? No, congrats, hun. Yeah, because in their, in their series, so it was the 2020 winter series, they, you're right, so Callum went into Casa Amor, like, pretty solid with Shauna, yeah. um, and then he came back with Molly, and it was one of those devastating Casa Amor moments, and nobody thought Molly and Callum would last, and then... Yeah, and then they were still together until six months before the series. Yeah. Like, um, so... They were like, as far as we knew them on Love Island, they were like the villains. But they've come on the show, this series, and just shown us like how they're both such lovely people, both so good looking as well. Mm. And they, but they are so genuine. They seem so genuine, both of them. Um, everyone loves them, seems to love them. And yeah, Nick thinks they're both going to come out of it with like way more brand deals than they were getting before the show. Yeah. Um, I think you're right because as well I think um, certainly when you thought of like the Love Island legends that we have on our wall um, and you know when we looked at the lineup and things we they were quite forgettable yeah they were always incredibly good looking but I don't think anyone really thought of them as legends per se but they have both, I th- I agree, like massively come into their own. Yeah. Callum, su- really surprisingly so. Yeah. Um. So I massively agree with Nick here. I don't agree with him on Arabella. <laughs> <laughs> um. But I definitely do on Callum and Molly. Um. Now, does he think that um, a thing that we were talking about yesterday is that there's some couples who are gonna make more money if they stay together versus ones who are going to be fine by themselves. What does Nick think about the kind of people that like make money from staying in a couple? So he definitely thinks there's a lot more money when you stay in a couple. Yeah. But um, when it comes to Molly and Tom, yeah, he thinks they can do really well together. But he is also like, he obviously is aware that everyone wants Molly and Callum to be together. Yeah. So... He, I think, regardless, they're all all three of them are going to do very well. Yeah, as we always like to say, the real winner is potentially going to be all of them. Yes, <laughs> um, definitely. Even if Callum doesn't, I mean, he went in there initially wanting to try and get Molly back, didn't he? Yeah. I mean, he didn't really go at it. No. Hard enough in mine or the British public's opinion, but. Um, like you say, he's come out of this really well. Oh, it's so interesting. So we need to talk more about Molly and Callum, aside from just their money-making potential. Yes. Because, obviously, a really big part of those calls for the girls was, and I didn't think they were allowed to do this, but all of them were Easter-egging yeah. like crazy, weren't they, about Molly and it Callum? so exciting. Yeah. <laughs> I love that they all said it. Yeah. Like, even to people not relevant in the situation, yeah. they were like, just so you know, the British public are obsessed with Molly and Callum getting back together. Okay. Um, 
Do you think, so popular th- fan theory is producers were like, talk about Molly and Callum. I think they might have been. Yeah. And even if they weren't, like, oh, oh yeah. sorry, even if they were, like, fine, do it. Go for it. Yeah. We want to see it. <laughs> exactly. Um, and I love that they all rush straight back to tell them. Yeah. Um, but I think the one that probably is going to hold the most weight is that Molly's busy mate Sophie said to her. Yeah. Um, so I think she said, sat there with the dog and she said... Say that the rule of the UK want, wanted you and Cal back together. <laughs> <laughs> it's been intense. Everyone is obsessed. And Molly did seem shocked didn't yeah, she she did because it might be that like molly and callum themselves don't even realize what everyone else can see <laughs> like they they belong together <laughs> yeah i know and what's quite interesting i've printed it out and everything did my homework today um sophie has now gone online and added to the callum and molly situation so i'm just going to read this one out she said i've had lots of dms i know everyone wants to push the callum and molly love story as much as we love them both we need to respect that they don't want that if they were meant to be it would have happened they both deserve to be happy and molly especially deserves someone who chooses her (gasps) i think that's a big clue she's so much love to give and she's the best person let's give her and tom the love back they deserve so I think that's interesting. Yeah, that is very interesting. Because I think that we always sort of felt like it was Callum that called time on that. And yeah. it was Callum that didn't make the effort and that kind yeah. of thing. And she actually did say something really interesting to Molly last night. She said, Tom's doing everything that she wanted from um, Callum. Yeah. So it's like, it's almost like she's telling her, Tom is Callum, but with the added bit of what she wanted from yeah so maybe tom and molly are good together (laughs) well it's like yesterday we talked as well about how casey had said on online that he was really shocked to come out and see the Mm. callum and molly thing because he was like tom and molly are so good together (sighs) oh um so i mean maybe it's just maybe we are just falling for what the producers are showing us i think i would find it very weird if i was Jess or Tom. Yeah. Like, I don't think I'd be able to handle if the person I was with, everyone was saying they needed to get back with their ex. No, that I know. must be so weird and such yeah. a lot of pressure. But everyone loves the star crossed lovers thing, don't they? Like, yeah. you know, showing them. But I mean, obviously, as we saw on last night's teaser, Tom yeah. doesn't look to be dealing with it very well. No. The public are, for some reason, Backing Callum because and Molly getting Liv back didn't together. didn't say it, but Brad said it in the background, basically. Well, obviously, obviously, something's been seen then. So, um, on tonight's show, as you can probably well imagine, all of the girls go and tell their boys, who then speak to Tom and be like, yeah. "It's a th- it's a thing," um, and yeah, it, it, he t- Tom. So I think that we need to remember that. Tom in his first series also had a bit of a rocky time, didn't he? Yeah. He had all of that difficult situation with Liv and Zara. Yeah. And what, what was it that she called him? Community p- penis. Oh yes. <laughs> oh my God, I forgot about that. We but should have had Zara on this series, I side note. Um, so I think that Tom was one of those who probably want, went in wanting to have a bit of a yeah. n- nice boy arc. But he did have his nice boy arc in his series because he ended up with Sammy and they were like very solid. Yeah. For quite, I feel like quite a long time. Like, in Love Island time. Yeah. In, like Love Island terms. Yeah. yeah. So I feel like he'd already had his nice guy arc. Yeah. Well, he, de- he definitely um, doesn't appreciate hearing about this Callum situation as well because Callum obviously is quite a lot older than Tom. Yeah. Um, and they do seem to like get on, like you say. Yeah. So I can't wait to see how that plays I out. I do feel like Tom seems quite a lot older than he is. Because is he 25? Yeah, he something like so that. He seems so much older than that. Yeah. I always say about Tom, he's just very like six foot five. Does, does, the, does, does the minimum, <laughs> nice I feel hi- like. He's a nice himbo. <laughs> he's such... A, yes, <laughs> you're so right. Yeah. And just, uh, I just imagine imagine being gifted with the qualities to just essentially 
turn up. Yeah, not that's, have much of a personality. Just be a nice yeah, person and be good looking. That's what I feel like Tom, like, I'm just jealous. Yeah, <laughs> That he same. can have his life like that. <laughs> um, but interestingly, another situation that kicks off tonight is between um, Georgia, Harrison and Anton. Oh, okay. I can reveal. So they have a massive row right. about these calls okay. to the point where Anton ends up sleeping outside <gasps> separately. No. Yeah. So I think um, it sounds like Georgia just massively starts deeping to say what the youth say, mm. the call with Olivia, and is kind of worrying about it. And I think she, I feel like, with Georgia I really feel like she cares so much what people think and it's so understandable with what she's been through but yeah I think that's so much of her problem mm, and it I has agree. been co- constantly uh, yeah and I, I always say about Georgia like there's like the surface level there's the subtext that we put on it but then we always need to like completely wrap that up within the we will never know what it feels like to have what's happened to Georgia happen to us but I did think last night when she was speaking to Olivia and Olivia was like everyone everyone everything that we've seen everyone loves you it it, it felt like there was an element of like she was trying to talking about her public image yeah yeah it um, definitely felt like that. Yeah. And um there was a touch of that with Danny Dyer and Georgia Steele um but I don't know. But I think with Danny Dyer and Georgia Steele, it was that Georgia had obviously been finding out what, like, she knew that the public weren't loving her. Yeah. So <laughs> Danny was like, just, it's okay. There was loads of fans online I was looking this morning, it made me laugh, being like, wow, Danny Dyer basically just essentially said to Georgia, everybody hates you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I know. Not great. She's locked in though, so it's fine. Yeah, she's <laughs> found her man and is fine. Oh, brilliant. Um, so the other thing that everyone noticed is talking about Arabella, her friend was in some kind of like library that looked like t- uh, like a mansion. That's so true. <laughs> is Arabella really rich? Um, I th- well, she's very posh. Yeah. So she might also be rich. <laughs> I was just like her fr- her friend either is just like. In a hotel, maybe. Yeah. And it it's li- just like, can I just quickly borrow the li- the library, the reading room? <laughs> or has got her own reading room. Yeah, she was in her, like, nice fur as well. Yeah. She looked expensive. Can you look into this, please? And do <laughs> some kind of, like, inside digging. Arabella's secret life as a rich person. I'm going to find that out for you. <laughs> <laughs> well, especially now, apparently, according to Nick, she's going to not get anything. So. Well, she'll be fine then. Cause... Let's hope she's invested in property or something. <laughs> I'm sure she has. <laughs> Um, the other thing which made me laugh about last night's show is when you know when they send the boys off to do some sort of activity and they always give them like a sport yeah Um, not a spa day because boys yeah and it's always usually football and you know they've always got some sort of like amateur footballers in the cast and it was making me laugh because in the VT it's Tom and Toby who obviously are the footballers. Yeah. And they're doing like keepy uppies and yeah. stuff. And I just find it so cringe. It is. Like, it's like the dancing in the at the beach club. Like, I yeah. find that cringe as well. It's the whole, you know that they've just been told like, okay, do this like Go little, over there and dance. Go over there and dance to probably no music. Yeah, <laughs> I know. And then um, I was thinking... Like, you know, at the very beginning of Love Island, when they all do their little thing where they're at their job and then yeah. they rip their clothes off. <laughs> um, it feels a bit like that. Like, yeah. they're like, this is your thing. Just go and do that on the camera. Oh, it is um, Our version would be like, go over there and type. Yeah. Literally, <laughs> just make some notes over there. <laughs> yeah. Just have a microphone hold, held up to someone and then just take your clothes off. <laughs> It'd be so <laughs> awkward. But then I was thinking like, do you think that Toby and Tom are like, oh God, I've got to make sure that I get this right because this is yeah. my job. Oh my, they must have been like that. That's so funny. The pressure. Yeah. 
the pressure would have been real. Yeah. Like, it's just so cringe. I oh, know. It's like if we were doing like the love declarations, right? Oh. As as like writers and journalists yeah. and stuff. There's so much pressure to actually be really well written. Uh, and do an actual decent poem. Yeah. <laughs> not like Adam's bless him. Oh, that poem. Not and she was so happy with it as well. I know. Oh, it was so bad. She's not read any of those books in her library, no. has she? If she was happy with that poem. <laughs> oh, Definitely bless her. not. Um, now you uh, were telling me earlier that your mum and dad are... Oh my God, I'm so jealous. Yeah. They're literally like a half an hour drive away from the villa right now as we speak. So can we recruit your mum and dad <laughs> to go and, I don't know. My mum would happily go, she's obsessed with Love Island. Is she? Yeah. She'd be like, oh, hello, <laughs> anyone? <laughs> I would love that because it's quite near the road, that villa. Yeah, I know. She was she was really looking into it, so maybe she will go down Ooh. there. They could pose as like what's the whatever the South South African version of Deliveroo is. <laughs> pose as like Deliveroo drivers and go and um, just say they got pizza for them. Yeah, because yeah. we've got. Um, I don't know if you heard the big news um, we revealed yesterday that all of the cast are going back yeah. for the final. And we've got Messi Mitch as our on-the-ground oh roving God, reporter. That. So your mum and dad and Messi Mitch. Messi Mitch and Messi mum. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I would love that. Because I think that, I think what they really need, and I think what was maybe lacking from it not being the families yeah. and it being their mates instead, is the sort of, do you remember that year when... Um, it was Paige when Paige oh, yeah. was with a- Adam Collard and her mum was like, I'm not buying it. Oh, no. <laughs> I do love when the parents, or I like when the parents say a really subtle dig, yeah. but we know what they mean. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I just love that. And Rochelle was a bit like that last night yeah. about Josh, wasn't she? I think so. I think she does not tr- trust Josh. No, I know. Also, a Rochelle and Marvin on another holiday. Probably, knowing them. She was always on, on holiday. I know. Because <laughs> she, was, she was on some sort of balcony and then Marvin pops his oh, head I in. Oh, I want that life. They're, they're literally always on holiday, yeah. aren't they? Yeah. I love that, Just though. been in Australia. I love that for them. Yeah. Um, now, my favourite thing to ask people when they come on the podcast, and this is putting you on the spot, obviously you've chatted to lots of islanders over the years. Who's been some of your favourites and who have been some of your less favourites? And why? Um, all of that is putting me on the spot. Um, I love Maura. Yeah. Like, I just love her. And Olivia Atwood, actually. Both of them. They're obviously iconic islanders. And they're just iconic people mm-hmm. in real life, too. Yeah. Yeah. I agree. And also, you've written loads, I feel like, about Molly and Tommy. Oh, you have written so much about them. Yeah. I have met Tommy. I have... Oh, no, I've met both of them. But, um... It was literally when they first came off the show. Yeah. Um, and Tom, they were both really nice, actually. Aww. But I haven't seen them in a while. <laughs> no. I feel like now, when we write about them, it's just about their ridiculous wealth. Yeah. And I think that's... I want Bambi's life. Oh, can you imagine? <laughs> <laughs> if I was... I was saying this to someone the other day. If I was Bambi Fury... I would be scared to be sick on myself Honestly. because that baby's always in so like white. thousands of pounds and everything's of white. white. Yeah, yeah. Oh. And do you? <laughs> but to be fair, they probably they can afford to replace a baby grow. Yeah, <laughs> <It's> <laughs> they probably can afford to get out the cashmere baby wipes oh, and. Um, I want to wear cashmere. I, I want to wear cashmere baby grow. <laughs> I know. Um, Because I know that you've spoken to Nick before about Molly and Tommy, haven't you? Yeah, I have. And their earning potential is just like... It's astronomical. Yeah. um, And the fact that I think he... I've spoken to him about the Furies generally and how they've sort of created... With the docu, with the um, TV show as well, yeah. it's like this whole brand, like trying to be like the Kardashians. Yeah, and, I mean they're doing a good job of it. They really are. But you know, I always think about the um, the Fury situation is, um, especially Tyson and Paris, just like really own. You know, they're from Morecambe. Yeah, they're northern. So down to earth. Got her. millions of children. Yeah, and you know, I think in the opening titles, the dog like went to went to the toilet yeah. on the pavement. It was all very like we are who we are. Yeah. It's like they could live anywhere, and they choose to live in Morecambe where yeah. they're from, which is 
Fair enough. And we loved that. But I always felt like Molly May didn't quite fit in. No. I don't know if she does. But to, yeah. Tommy's different. Tommy's not Tyson, to be fair. No, I know. <laughs> but I always, I always like thinking about how if there was a conversation where Molly was like... I don't want to fully be in the net, in the reality <laughs> show because I'm I'm a bit more like Hermes yeah. than H and M. Yeah, you know I, what I mean. I think that happened that conversation. Yeah, because they're only in it a little bit, aren't they, yeah. Molly and Tommy? Yeah, in their really white house yeah. mansion. I was yeah, gonna say flat. <laughs> I love all this stuff though, like the kind of inner workings yeah. of the islanders. Yeah, it's so interesting. <gasps> right, final question for you: your predictions for this series you think Molly and Tom are gonna win I do think Molly and Tom will win um I thought Sophie and Josh for a bit but then they were in the bottom they were in the bottom that time so I'm like maybe they're not as popular with the public um as I thought um I think and I think Anton and George H but then I'm also I think they're just really popular separately I don't feel like people buy them as a couple mm. um but we love anton by the way we ha- i haven't even mentioned how much i love Anton. <laughs> i loved that nick said that anton could be the new joe wicks yeah <laughs> he said with his um he spoke to me about like the health and fitness yeah stuff. like obviously he's so into that and he was like yeah like people love him and he could build a whole health and fitness brand like joe wicks I know. Imagine that. I know. <laughs> I know. Bless him. Oh well. Um who knows? Yeah. What's really exciting I think as well is that um we've got a couple of days before the final. And are you gonna have a bet? Um I will. I think I am gonna bet on Molly and uh, I was gonna say Molly and Callum, Molly and Tom to win. <gasps> I think that if you'd have bet on Molly and Callum at the beginning, it would have felt quite a sure bet. But yeah. now, oh, so. I know. I still have hopes for them. I know. I know her friend said not to. No, I know. <laughs> Hayley, it's been amazing having you on. Thank you for having me. I'm going to let you go because you need to go and ask your boyfriend if you're locked in. I do. <laughs> I'll get back to you tomorrow. And I'm going to get on the case <laughs> of finding a young person to explain this to us. Uh, we'll be back on Monday when it's the final, which is very exciting. Amanda will be back. We'll have all the gossip and no doubt here that she's now locked in with a member of the England rugby team. Have a good weekend. Bye.